Chapter 14 and verse 1. God says, Beware the foolish woman. The wise woman builds her house, as we saw a little while ago, but with her own hands the foolish one tears it down. A woman who doesn't apply the wisdom that is from above, that is pure and peaceable and gentle and easily entreated and full of mercy and good fruits, as it says in James, is foolish. And if she does not have the wisdom that is from above, and if her wisdom does not come from God but comes from beneath and is earthly, sensual, and demonic, as James continues, tears down her house, tears down all that she has been blessed of God to have. So the seventh woman God says to beware of is the foolish woman. Chapter 21, if you keep going to the right, is the eighth type of woman. God says beware of a contentious woman. Remember I told you that the seductress flatters with her mouth. And and it's so interesting that, that this woman that allured men, more often than sensually, she allures them with her talk because there's such a need for men to be encouraged. And so... This contentious woman is the other end of the spectrum. Proverbs 21.9, It's better to live in the corner of the roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. And part of the, the Proverbs picture is, if, if you don't want your husband straying, don't be a contentious woman. Now you say, does it excuse his straying? No. And he will answer to God and will pay the price for what he does in his body. But a quarrelsome woman... The wisest man in the world, inspired by the God of the universe, says, it'd be better to move up on the corner of your roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. That's a warning to be careful of your words. They're so powerful. Keep going to chapter 25 and verse 24. Same thing. Better to live on the corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Isn't it amazing that Solomon repeats himself? He's showing the detrimental, long-term power of words. It was so interesting. Uh, a week ago, I was on Thursday, was on my knees on the bedside of one of our dear saints who's fading and slowly going into eternity, and the family was all gathered around. And it was so sweet. We were having communion, and, and I was close so she could hear me. And as I was reading, she looked up and she said, You will never know how much words can touch someone's life. And I thought with all the tubes and everything that was going on, how impactful the words of the songs that the family were singing, the words of the Scripture, and the encouraging words we were speaking, how powerfully to a dying woman those could impact her life. Do you know how powerful our words are? And God says, be careful to not be contentious. Keep going to chapter 27. In verse 15, he says it a third time, a quarrelsome wife. You know what a quarrelsome wife? You know what the word literally means? You cannot ever please them. Nothing is ever enough. Nothing is ever good enough. Nothing is ever right. Nothing is as good as somebody else has. And they're just always quarreling about it. Why did you do this? Why? You? It's just this. It's very interesting. One of those onomatopoeic words that just sounds like what it is. They just blah, 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 blah. You know, a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping on a rainy day. This week, Bonnie and I were sound asleep in this, uh, I don't know what it was called, Mountainside Manor or something like that. It's just a room a friend of ours named. And we were staying at their house. And at about 5.45 in the morning, I heard drip, drip, drip. And I turned my head and I thought, that's not coming from the bathroom. So I went this way and it was coming from not the bathroom. And I thought, that's a bad sign. But I kind of went back to sleep. I thought it would go away. And about 6 o'clock, it was going. And so I got up, and through the ceiling was dripping water from the upstairs, and I thought, this is not good. So I put buckets under all the drips and started walking all around the house trying to figure out these beautiful big houses. And and it wasn't the washing machine, it wasn't the bathroom, it wasn't the kitchen, until finally I found this little, little thing they had in the corner that someone had forgot to turn off, and it was just putting out a stream of hot water that was going all the way through that beautiful first floor and down through the thick floor into the basement where we were. It was just running down. You know what I thought about? I thought about how thankful I am that I don't live in a drippy house. Do you know how horrible it is to hear that sound? How it wakes, Such a small sound wakes you up and you can't go back to sleep and how it just gets on your nerves till you do anything to make it stop. Proverbs 
a wife who constantly is dropping those little comments is like the dripping on a rainy day. Remember the people then had sod? They, they had cross sticks, then they had branches, then they had dirt, then they had grass in the first century and back homes. And those things would be packed down by a roller until they got nice and hard so that they would make it through the rainy season. But if you didn't prepare your thatched roof well enough in the rainy season, it would start dripping. It would drive the people crazy. And so they worked really hard not to have drippy roofs. And he says, beware of contentious women. They will drive you uh, to distraction. Here's the last one. Go back to 2119. Because here's the last type of woman God says to beware of. And then we're going to look at the positive ones real quickly. God says, beware of the angry woman in Proverbs 2119. It's better to live in a desert. By the way, a desert with scorpions and poisonous snakes and no water and heat that can kill you and everything else. It's better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and an ill-tempered or angry wife. So God says, beware. Beware of angry women and contentious women and foolish women and indiscreet but lovely women and loud and foolish women and harlotrous women. Beware of the evil woman, the adulterous woman, and the immoral woman. 